Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what are we going to do today? Turn this on for a start. We're going to transfer some water. See how much water is actually in there. There's 300 litres. Let's transfer 100 litres to the boil kettle. There's 100. Run. HLT pump on. There she goes. So, there's not much head pressure in there. We're running at 8 litres per minute. So, 10 minutes, 80 litres. So, that'll take 10 minutes to transfer. It's quite a long time, really, if you think about it, isn't it? And we want to auto tune this so let's turn him on let's turn the HLT on and we'll let this get up to 80 so we want to set this to 80 degrees which will be the ideal temperature for mashing in at and then we'll allow it to do its thing and then the water that we transferred over will top up a little bit so those elements are covered then we'll give that a test as well so we can make sure that everything's working as it should give the boil pump a test the mash pump a test and then we're ready for a brew day Gemma's helped with a huge tidy up operation. The workshop is now looking, well, the best it's looked for at least two weeks. A little bit of stuff to tidy up over here. There's one of the jacks on the floor. Stay tuned. There's going to be an absolutely amazing build for that bad boy. So we've still got a lot of work to tidy this unit up. There's all these buckets of scrap metal here. I don't want them in here. I'm going to have to figure something out. What to do with all them they might have to go out back i don't know and out here we've almost cleaned everything up we've just got this bunding to uh wash out that's the acid tank so if any of these acid containers spring a leak it's contained within that container there same goes for the um caustics Something I wanted to actually point out before I uh, get to showing you the old, or new rather, control panel. Um, so somebody had left a comment the other day saying the floor looks shagged after you spent all that money on it. No, actually, this section of the floor doesn't get cleaned because it runs down that way. So this area is what we hose down generally this section don't get so much so if you just look the floor is actually spot on but it just uh, doesn't get doesn't get the uh, the mop treatment quite as often as everywhere else does and then all these little bits here like this pitting that's actually still clean floor under there but the concrete was terrible and we didn't do as much treatment on this as we did the rest. So there are areas where any dirt can kind of hang out, if you know what I mean. And that's what those bits are there. So if I had the hose pipe on them or jet wash, they'd clean out. But the main area, as you can see, just looks a bit dirty. Like places like that, looks like, looks like a... Um, a hole in the floor as you can see it isn't there's one there look we'll do the same with that it's just a low spot where dirt kind of collects if you can see what I mean so would I do the floor again with the resin coat yes is it perfect no what's the reason well the floor wasn't great in the first instance it was a very badly laid slab and it had had years of deterioration and chemicals and all sorts on it so we had to, you know, piss with the cock that you've got, I suppose is the terminology. 
and we did a lot of work in prepping it but we were never going to get it surf surface perfect without pouring a new slab and that we ain't gonna do so don't worry about the floor it's perfect and uh, yes I would totally do it again right back to the subject at hand we've got the HLT still doing its thing auto tuning so we can rely on that to find its own temperature in the absence of any personnel this one on the other hand is always used in manual mode so all we need to do is turn it on and off so 38 amps 19 on each uh, phase on each element so when we turn this on we should see a jump of 38 amps bring us up to about 57 perfect so that's HLT elements on and they are in here where we've got some water just to cover the float switch so it works so what I'm going to do is slowly start draining that water out and we should see those elements turn off so if I just crack this valve just a little bit and we're starting to drain yes we are we should see that light or at least the current on those elements drop when the water level falls below the float valve let's just see how quickly this is draining ah, it's not too fast that's good I didn't want it to go too fast just in case it expose the elements so we might have a minute or two to go you can see the heat coming off of them if I just stay still you can see them bubbling away so uh, about an inch or two above the float valve now you can see above it is the temperature probe so when the hole is exposed then I'll run down and we'll have a quick look and just make sure that the elements do indeed turn off and then we know that that safety feature of breaking the circuit if there isn't a sufficient liquid to cover the elements is working it's actually uh, it's going down a lot slower than I thought it would I think we've just about hit the hole there so let's have a leisurely walk back round keep her eyes on the ampage bolts, amps, framing so we just should see that should see that drop off any second and if it does if it drops down to 19 because we've got obviously that one on then it's doing its job perfectly come on sunshine don't let me down anybody worried yet? Kind of is going on a little bit isn't it? I think it's running out slow enough though to not cause any damage should it not work. I have every confidence that it will. Yeah I should speed this bit up really. Boom, did it, perfect. I was thinking, am I gonna go and look? <laughs> but you've got to have faith, you've got to have faith in your wiring. And there you go, you can see that the float level has dropped and there is still plenty of water above the elements. But that means that that fail safe is indeed working perfectly. Result. So now we can move on to another project. Well I'll turn that off anyway and then usually what I'll do on a brew day is I'll isolate both as well just to 
be double safe that there's no leakage current because of course the solid state relays are electrically switching and the isolators are mechanically switching so mechanically switching them is a heck of a lot safer there we go record so now another test pump test so we've got the pump wired into a plug at the moment not through the panel so I can put it on a timer and I'm waiting for a 12 volt relay which I haven't ordered yet so it'll be a long wait better make sure that the lids closed because we're going to be powering up that spray ball and we don't want to be wearing that water so this is the first run of the new switch which is going to recirculate the boil kettle and she works she works oh she works like a dream open the valve fully it was just closed and she's away that's good news So I'm just going to recirculate this water through here whilst I can, just because it's in the tank. And also something I wanted to have a look at was making sure that we didn't have any variations on here. So previously when this pump was on, we saw some feedback through the temperature on the PIDs and also on the power meter. So that's on and everything looks stable there doesn't seem to be any fluctuations on here at all or on here that one's climbing i think we've we've cracked it so essentially i think that feedback could have been what caused the solid state relay to fail in the first instance so the fact that we've eliminated that is certainly not a bad thing so I'm gonna cut the video here because this pumps loud and I want it to run for a minute or two